All right, it's winter 2022. I've been working on my tiling window manager config, and I thought it'd be good to talk about it in a video a little bit. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's interesting to me on a personal level of how I use a computer and also kind of interaction wise as a programmer, designer, um, what people can do for computers, how we can customize them. In this case, it's me customizing things. Um, yeah, so um, I am using Awesome Window Manager. It's a tiling window manager for Linux. Um, so yeah, it's a whole world that now I've been in a little bit. I've uh, been using i3wm for two or three years, which is a different tiling window manager. And um, if you're getting started with this stuff, it can be a lot to jump into. There's some other nice videos out there. Uh, it's kind of good to know there's like distributions and then there's window managers. So you can probably uh, jump in on Ubuntu and then um, install a tiling window manager. And then you can actually choose it from the login screen um, and also get out of it and then choose kind of a regular desktop environment, probably GNOME. Um, and that's a good thing to know because um, a lot of these window managers can be bare bones. Awesome WM is less bare bones than i3WM was um, for me getting started. A lot of it like also makes you think about like, you know, you got your Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth. Those are kind of the things and probably those programs run in your window manager, but the, your window manager, uh, tiling window manager may not show that to you. Awesome WM is actually a lot better at that, um, but also I kind of got used to um, looking for stuff either through a program switcher. Uh, D menu is popular, but uh, Awesome WM has its own thing that's uh, mod P. Um, where it's um, it's actually a lot like uh, I think it's like Raycast, like some of the op application launchers that you now see more commonly on Mac, Mac um, or Spotlight, I guess, um, where you can uh, you open it, you start typing, and it, and it auto completes towards what you want. Um, but yeah, let's okay. What is the tiling window manager versus? kind of a regular, what we think of as regular, which is usually floating window uh, environments. So as you open windows, and I guess I could even uh, start from scratch. So use this, I'll open that. Uh, actually kind of showed it, but um, opens window to the max size or here we've got my bar and otherwise maxed out. Then I bring in another thing which is mod key enter for terminals um, uh, in most of these window managers and it pops up right alongside. It splits here. How it splits it up is up to the window manager. Uh, let me put some stuff in here. Because um, it's more fun to have stuff. I had a, a note without anything much in it. I didn't save my note. Uh, what it is, what I do with it. So my notes on what to talk about. Um, yeah, so these pop up and the layouts um, determined by the window manager. There's some stuff where uh, a lot of them are what are called dynamic, like this is. Um, i3wm and bspwm are uh, manual, which is basically you choose a window and it splits it um, as you add stuff. So I made this web app that's kind of a version of that. Um, gets you this kind of spiral pattern because it splits on the long side. I think this stuff is really cool. Uh, I may end up back on a manual one sometime where it can get complicated is so all of this is very keyboard focused. Um, it makes so you can move stuff e around easily with shortcuts when you have a tree based thing like I3WM. Um, where stuff is going to go is not apparent. 
I worked out this logic and I think it's pretty good but it's still some overhead um, so I was kind of I was interested to try out awesome uh, because it's got a lot of nice config and docs and stuff and then it's also the dynamic which basically I've kind of learned stuff is actually all these windows are in a one-dimensional list and then they get filled in these slots according to some logic and you can even write your own logic uh, so that gives you kind of less direct control over splitting stuff maybe like you'd want but it does let you switch layout so this just flips it this is uh, center work it's not playing nice with the uh, terminal width that it expected there but that's fine but puts one in the center uh, and then it'll st start to tile them in down the sides which is really fun um, and works well for ultra-wides um, max which is all maxed out but also still has these nice so you're always switching focus with um, vim keys a mod key plus vim key which is j and k um, this lets you switch focus through a bunch kind of keeps your list and um, well I'll talk a little bit more about the list magnifier um, is similar to max but kind of puts it out front my focus stuff's a little weird because I have these two floating windows so it does let you do floating windows and I don't know like all of this stuff I was gonna say it handles floating windows better than i3wm that may be because I just didn't config i3 well enough and I should have done something but uh, for me it was like easier to get these always on top floating windows which is fun for videos and stuff um, uh, I still need to do some work to make that workflow smoother uh, yeah but I guess I was saying my focus is also going to the floating windows which kind of makes sense but I'm sure I can configure it to kind of leave out the floating windows when they're always on top I'll do that sometime um what else do we want to see okay so i was thinking maybe it's hard to do this a lot of the action here is in the top bar and it's pretty hard to see the top bar so let's go to the lua config um and make that font bigger and make that height taller and it's going to look a little wacky um, but should maybe be easier to see what's happening up there so I'm going to hot reload awesome it's nice it does that it loses some of my names um, because uh, I don't know I haven't fixed it to not do that or it kind of makes sense my battery widget looks like it's kind of broken I'm not sure why that's pretty new these are all called widgets kind of status bars and they're extremely configurable and you can get some from other people um, but I'm gonna leave out uh, my battery widget for now and that will give us a little more space it's weird icons for the always on top stuff um, okay so now let's do the bar so we can talk about workspaces I take this so for granted now um but it's so nice is that workspaces are just mod key plus a number go through all of them there's different configs i have this kind of set up so that if there's nothing on the config it doesn't show up um, and then this i carried over from i3 but maybe it was even here before um, i have this shortcut i can name them this is uh well name it off or awesome so OBS, this is the cam and kind of subtitle or key titles um, app. So I can name all these workspaces, also click through them, um, but just hit them with the short keys. Love this, love not needing to swipe. I could probably get a swipe gesture working. Um, I love how quick it is. So there's some things. Um, there's compositors um, that can help with make stuff look nicer. So there's Pico, a lot of people use. I'll probably use it, but once in a while it like screws up video. 
Um, but if I just start running that, then I get fades between uh, windows, which is a little nicer. I don't know how much this will even come through in the compressed video. Um, but yeah, also I had some like things where like uh, I had some like screen. This is supposed to help with screen tear, but why I should run this at startup probably, but um, sometimes it does weird stuff, so I leave it out until I can spend some time. And that's a lot of this config stuff. It's getting used to what do you need uh, versus like what do you want to save for another day when you're feeling like doing config stuff. Let's talk about a little workflow stuff. So I have the workspaces and yeah, they actually don't have to configure it this way. A lot of people, um, or it seems like people maybe stick. So you can have your workspaces kind of set like this is my browser space and mine often like gets I often put stuff in the same place but I don't have rules about where stuff goes you can do that uh, I really like sort of this feeling of an unassuming uh, system that you can name stuff put it where you want um, that's the process I'm interested in so that's the being able to name with a quick shortcut get in for that and then so then I can sort of depending on what I'm doing that day do the workflow I want and it adapts that way and it's also a process of like maybe after if I notice a pattern um, that I do all the time then maybe I can uh, codify that so a lot like um, programming where you don't uh, want to do premature abstraction you want to kind of do it almost manually it is manual, but you're obviously configuring the interface. So I can, like, part of it is I can name them really quickly. And if I can or can't, affects whether I'm going to do that. Um, but yeah, so it's configurable workspace setup. First, basically, like, just get me another screen. Let me put what I want on it. Um, and let's do that and let's go. Uh, and maybe along those lines, so a few workflow things to show. Uh, are just like kind of normal programming stuff. I'm going to bump the font up here so that's not going to look quite like it would in real life. But um, if I run, uh, what is this? Uh, it's a Next.js app from front end developer. Um, actually have this shortened. Uh, I often run NeoVim, so I have that. I can have this kind of tiled here. So I have um, terminal output and program output, or um, I can minimize that. Um, and then I'm kind of here. Often I'll hide the bar, and then I have this kind of perfect split screen work mode, code, and output uh, environment, and that's really nice. Um, yeah, um, I think other workflow stuff, I can name that dev. Uh, I've been experimenting a lot with uh, um, some scripts, so I can just type daily, and that gives me um, kind of a daily note thing, sort of this is like experimenting with versus note taking app like Rome or Obsidian or stuff. Like maybe I'm just gonna do text files for a while. I have a nice like, um, I think it's called True Zen, True Zen uh, package for NeoVim uh, that gives you that minimal stuff there. And yeah, then I can also have a to-do list that works similarly. Um, sort of just starts up. Um, so that's notes page and then try and have that open. Still working on that. Maybe I should float some of that stuff. Um, so I'd have a floating to-do list that pops up based on a key. Um, but yeah, um, that's a little bit unpolished, unvarnished workflow stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't talk too much config. Um, I think awesome WM configs pretty readable. Maybe I'm going to 
go make that bar and this is my web app I'll go make that um, bar back regular size kind of so that's gonna get my names back it shifts some windows when I restart it maybe I can figure that out maybe I just won't be um, changing the config all the time so it's not a big deal um, so this is yeah back to kind of the normal view so the bar is very readable for me probably not in the video but it's nice it gets out of the way um, yeah that's that's some awesome WM workflow quick showing you what's going on these days with me um, and maybe I'll do some more stuff um, but I I really enjoy it like I said it's both for personal workflow stuff and for kind of exploring the possibilities uh, I should say like it's great people have put so much work into this stuff uh, you know all open source development people making what they wanted to see and and um, joint collaborations there and people like kind of using ideas from other managers and uh, going back and forth it's like this alternate uh, evolutionary development of interactions uh, which is fun for me to see